In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Marianne's guests are leaders in their field, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in their own work. They teach others to develop, refocus, and grow. Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. And remember, make every moment count. Welcome to Moments with Marianne. Today, my special guest is Laura Hullick. She is an award-winning artist, creative spiritual entrepreneur, and lover of the earth. So welcome to the show, Laura. Hello. So happy to be here and connect with you and dive into the dreams that we all have and how we can make them real. Oh, my goodness. Well, you're definitely <laughs> the creative person for that. I mean, I, on your website, you have this amazing video. I think it was a TEDx talk that you did. Mm-hmm. And, oh, wow, you know, talking about you being the art. So before we get the – I mean, I can get the cart before the horse here easily because there's so much fun here to talk about. But why don't we – why don't you talk to our listeners about, you know, how you got started along this path? Mm-hmm, for sure. So for me, when I was a kid, it goes right back to the beginning. I really do think we all come in already knowing what our essence is. We might not know it to name it, but we already have a sense of what brings us joy, what scares us, you know, what intimidates us, and then also what we're drawn to and attracted to. And when I was a kid, I actually felt very disconnected from people and in my family. I mean, I had a beautiful family, but I just felt disconnected somehow. And so what I did was I found my joy by retreating into my imagination. And so throughout my childhood, I spent a lot of time just dreaming and imagining. And then as I started getting older, I had this feeling like I want to make my imagination real. Because when I was in that beautiful, magical world of my imagination, Mm -hmm. I felt at home. I felt connected. And so I started to create art really as a way to feel like I could be at home and connected in this world that my imagination could become reality. And then as things went on, I was like, you know what? My whole life is art. And it just started to evolve that everything that I was doing was turning into a creation of my imagination, like right down to like, what am I eating? What's my schedule like? How am I marketing my business? How am I spending my time to what am I painting on this canvas? And what photo shoot am I doing? And so everything became an expression of my imagination and the vision that I wanted to create for my life. Mm. That is, that's just amazing. So for our listeners, like, what's a way that they can be creative in their own lives? I think that creativity is something that is so natural to all of us. And when we think about where we came from, we came from the creative act of our parents <laughs> through their creative energy of joining together. It created us. And so we actually come from this energy. Like, we exist because of creativity. And so I think that when people hear the word artist, often they think, oh, well, I'm not an artist because I'm not painting this canvas and I can't draw something realistically. And they get kind of all tripped up with it. But really, creativity is just the natural flow of your own expression, your natural impulse towards something. And it's something that is joyful. It's something that has the energy of your spirit woven into it because it's something that's birthing. Creation is, it hasn't existed before, so you're creating it into reality. And the best way that we can tap into that is being aware of our natural self, like what is naturally joyful to us? What are What is our impulse guiding us towards? And then do we let ourselves go there? Do we let ourselves be in our joy? Because when we're in our joy, we will be creating something, whether it's a meal, a party, an outfit, a painting. We will create things because joy will naturally have that kind of fertile soil to make things happen. Mm -hmm. So to be creative is to, to connect with your naturalness, to know what brings you joy and to give yourself permission to be in that energy, to luxuriate in that essence of yourself. And from that place, 
you don't even have to think about creativity because you'll just naturally have ideas flow like, oh, I want to set the table this way. And like I think about my mom and her creativity really flows in how she decorates the home. And so always the, the way that the table would be set and the centerpiece in the table, to me, looked like total art is just so beautiful because she had so much joy and pleasure and she would make things up. She would have color combinations of flowers when she was doing the arranging and, and place the napkin in a certain way so it matched the flowers on the table. And it was just because she was in her joy. And so she created things from that place. And we all do that. I think that we just get tripped up on the idea of the medium, that it should be a certain thing in order to classify ourselves as mm-hmm. artists or creatives. But really, we all are creative. We come from creative energy. And it's really about being natural, being who we naturally are. Well, and I know that um, you have some amazing inspiration for your work here. So why don't you tell our listeners, where does your inspiration come from? For me, I feel like it comes from kind of like another world. Like when I was a kid and I I was really in a way seeking for my home, like my spirit was kind of seeking for a sense of home. And I would spend a lot of time in nature. So nature felt like home to me. But while I was in nature, I would imagine these other worlds. And, And they felt like home. And so when I think about where do my ideas come from or the inspiration, it's really tapping into my spirit home and the the origin of my essence, and then how it wants to reveal itself to me. But I'm always going deeper into that. I'm always going deeper into how I can connect with my spirit, how I can embody my spirit, how I can understand its language, and then not only understand it for myself, but communicate it to others. Because I feel like when I'm able to do that, then other people remember the calling of their own spirit, in the process of either seeing or hearing my spirit speak and express. So it's really, I would say, spirit is the source of my inspiration. Well, and then that leads me to my next question, um, basically is, you know, what is soul art? Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's as I described, soul art is the ability to create and express things that come from your spirit. And not just express them in a way that it's just kind of happening, but actually really understand the communication. So being able to decode the language of your own spirit. And as we do that, although it feels fantastic, and that's a reason enough to do it, but Mm -hmm. even more so, it creates healing and it gives us clarity of purpose and the direction and the courage to walk our path and go for our dreams. So soul art essentially is, I use a creative process that allows us to connect with spirit. And then, then it's about expressing who you really are. What is your spirit? What does it want to do and be in this world? And go through the healing process that's necessary in most cases for most people to be able to live their spirit and to be able to make their life an expression of who they are and who they really dream of being. Hmm. That's beautiful. Well, and so I know in your art, you talk about, you know, not using the traditional ways of expressing art and the creative mm-hmm. process. You use your your body and color and nature a lot in the mm-hmm. artwork that you do. And is there a certain, like, I'm looking at Rainbow Portal, and that's when I just keep <laughs> yes. looking at it, like, I love this. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So when, when you have pieces, like, how do you get to the point where you're like, hey, I can envision this, and I, this is how I'm seeing it. It's going to you know, come, come together, because you're really mm-hmm. living art as opposed to mm-hmm. something someone would buy on a canvas. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's really a, a, a grander expression. Hmm. Yeah, I've come to see my art kind of like ritualistic embodiment of spirit, but also the way of infusing spirit into like the daily life. So it's kind of mundane ritualizing in a way um, <laughs> with the piece, the, the rainbow portal one. So on one of my hikes one day, I saw this, this fallen tree. And I was like, Oh, that's neat. And it kind of made this archway. And, and so I started walking through it, and I just felt like, oh, my gosh, I could pass through a portal through this tree. And then I just got the idea. I'm like, I'm going to make a portal. And 
and I had this whole vision, mapped it all out. My idea didn't actually work um, because we had this whole plan to like build this whole thing. Didn't totally happen. But what I find is I get a spark of an idea and then it leads me on a path that I don't totally know how it's going to end up, but I have the piece I need for the step I'm on. So I had the idea, I'm like, all right, I'm going to create this portal and I'm going to pass through it. And it felt like a symbol of me being able to go into the next level of what I wanted to create. And yet then the process of doing it, logistically building that portal was a little more challenging than I thought it would be. (laughs) And so it evolved into what you see in the picture, which I'm actually even more thrilled with. Um, From what I had originally thought, it, it evolved to what it is. And then I made that rainbow carpet that goes through it. So the creative process, there is like a a spark of an idea that starts it off, but it never, in my experience, has ever ended up the way I thought it would. And Mm -hmm. to me, that's the pleasure, and really that's the sign of it really being art, because art is, it's really a communion with spirit. And we can't know what the outcome is going to be. We actually have to take the journey and enter the creative process to find out And I just happened to have like a a massive amount of pleasure in that process of entering the unknown and taking the journey and and finding out like how does this vision really want to become reality. And and so I just I'm always in that birthing process of letting things come through. But really with that piece, it was like the idea came, I was on a hike, I saw something and then entered the creative process to see how it actually wanted to become reality. Oh, my goodness. Well, and, and another one that's caught my eye, because, I mean, these pieces are just so profound, is the red tree. And I look at mm-hmm. this, it's like, I love this. <laughs> you know? And what, um, I mean, it, it really, I'm just curious, like, what inspired you for this piece? Mm-hmm. So that one had a little bit of a different beginning from the way the portal one started. The portal one, I, I saw that fallen tree, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make a portal. With the red tree, I actually, a lot of times, because I, I'm processing a lot of energies, it feels like a lot of time, like I'm moving through different ideas or healing different things and all that kind of stuff. So I like to do meditative tasks to just let myself integrate everything that I feel is channeling through me. And so one of my meditative tasks at one point was I was making these red shapes, sewing them and like cutting them out, sewing them and just repeatedly I did like hundreds of them and so once I had all these red shapes I thought oh they kind of look like bark like bark on a tree Mm because they sort of all float in a certain way and so I thought I'm going to be a tree I'm going to be a red tree and then it evolved to where could I put this red tree and I was out driving one day and I saw the perfect forest and we just waited for the snow to be the perfect kind of scene and it was freezing cold. <laughs> like, I mean, freezing I'm living cold. cold. <laughs> um, but I just went in there, and it was such a meditation of finding my inner heat and being warm from the inside and letting that warm me, literally, in that, that winter scene. So that piece, again, it was like a creative process. It just, like, one piece led to the other, and I just followed the trail. I really feel like I'm guided in the creations, like something wants to be created through me. And I feel my job is listening. Like I tap into spirit. I listen. And I, I have such immense trust for the clues that come. Like a little clue is enough for me to move forward. Like I just need one little hint of a clue and then I'm like, I, I, that's enough. And I know the next piece will come along. So with that one, I just started meditatively creating those red pieces that became the bark on that tree. Oh, my goodness. I love it. I mean, I'm, I can't get enough of your art. I mean, I've been going through the different art pieces that you have here in your gallery, and it's, it's really remarkable what you've created here. I mean, I can go on all day about a few of these. Now, if somebody was looking like, hey, I think this is really cool, you know, they go through your gallery and like, I want to do something like this, do you teach workshops or do you, um, you know, how, how are they able to engage in a way that they can maybe, you know, um, have you work with them or, you know, there's something online that they can do with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. When I first started, I was just so focused on my, my own expression and I still, that's a huge part of what I do is just continuously mm-hmm. entering my own process. 
But I also found that to balance all the inner things that I was doing with myself, that I wanted to share it with other people. And so about 20 years ago, I started a thing called Soul Art, and it's now a Soul Art certification. So I, I teach and train people of how to use the methods that I've used to connect with spirit for healing and for clear vision and I guide people to become certified in those methods so that they can then lead soul art workshops. So now there's hundreds of people, thousands actually, all over the world who practice soul art. And we have an event each year. It's a global event, and it's free, and it's called International Soul Art Day. And it's where we connect virtually, and there's thousands of people. It blows my mind. Thousands of people connect virtually to create art together for the day. And I guide a soul art journey so anyone can participate. And it's just, it's amazing. This year will be our fifth year that we're doing it. So that's one of the ways that um, people can do it for themselves. And then there's the Mm -hmm. certification if people want to be trained. And then for other people who just want to kind of amplify their creativity, I do have a creativity cleanse. And it's an 11-day journey that they can do online to to clear their own channel, to get their creativity moving and feel like their their inspiration is, you know, flowing like a waterfall and that their ideas can go from idea to reality. So there's a creativity cleanse on my website as well. Do you find that, um, like, some of the, big, the biggest blocks that people have is maybe thinking that they're not creative enough or what they're doing isn't really art? Um, what are some of the biggest like pushbacks that you normally see with people mm-hmm. starting to open up their creative process? Let's say I wanted to go ahead and do the 11 day creative cleanse. Like, you know, what's like the biggest block that you see with people? Yeah, I feel like the the biggest block, people can say things like, oh, I'm not creative, but there's even something underneath that. And what mm-hmm. I've found underneath is really beliefs that are not aligned with who their spirit is. And it's as simple as that. And yet they can take any type of a form. It could be someone um, said to them when they were a child, like, oh, you know, oh, your, your brother or your sister is much better at art. Why don't you go focus on sports or something like that? And then they got the oh, yeah. belief that I'm not good at this. Someone else is better. I'm not going to embarrass myself or whatever. So it's really just belief system. And as simple as that is, it's actually quite complicated because sometimes we don't even know that we're operating under a false belief. The only way that we can tell that we're operating under a false belief is that we don't feel good. And that's why there's such a healing process when we start expressing our creativity because creative energy is natural and it's healthy. And when we start bringing creativity, the creative energy into our body and into our life, it'll run through our body like as if blood's moving through all the veins. It goes through our body, and then it will highlight a section that is not flowing in truth and naturally. And in truth just simply means, like, is this in alignment with who you really are? And if it's not, then the creative energy tries to move through it, and it will eventually get through. But those are the blocks. It's just anything that's not really true to a person's spirit. And and I've experienced this firsthand when I was uh, I was growing up, and then I went to university for fine arts, and then after that, I'm like, all right, well, I'll go and be an artist. And I really didn't know that I was going to have to figure out this money piece. <laughs> I just thought, well, I'll just do my thing. And, you know, but I, I, was, I had a little pushback on that because I'm like, oh, you mean I've got to figure out how to make money. And all of a sudden I realized I had so many beliefs about how hard it was to make money and how artists don't make money. And I just mm-hmm. felt horrible about it. I just felt absolutely horrible about it. And I I thought, well, how can I be so creative and yet so blocked in this other area? And that's a common thing, too. People can feel really healthy and alive and vibrant in certain aspects, but then there will be this one little crevice of an area in their life that's just like it's stagnant and not moving. And really just means that the creative energy has not gotten into those areas. And so I had to find a way of how can I let this this health of my creativity, this health of my spirit into my belief systems around money. And so actually, uh, you know, I've done that and I have a very successful business. And one of the courses that I I used to teach was follow your heart and make money. And that has evolved Mm -hmm. into my program called the new icon program. But I feel like any time that we have something that doesn't match the truth of who we know we really are, it doesn't feel good. And so it's just a clue 
it's not a punishment. It's a clue to say, okay, something about what we're doing here isn't the truth. And so what is the truth? And then we just start to find ways and playful, joyful, kind, gentle ways to bring our naturalness, bring our creativity, bring our spirit into our life in all areas so it'll naturally heal because it'll just, it'll go through and it like, it realigns any kinks that of lies, essentially. It's so mm-hmm. powerful. And it, it never really ends. Like we're always going deeper into the process, deeper into who we want to be. And so there's things to heal and clear and belief systems come up. And I've even found it myself. I'm like, wow, I can't believe that I think that way. And then I realize, like, oh, yeah, well, I remember so-and-so said that when I was 10. And then I just thought it was real, but it's not even something I want to believe. So it, it's a really powerful process to uncover the truth. And to know that the truth is where our joy is and where our power is. Oh, definitely. And, you know, and that's a big thing for a lot of creative people or healers and definitely artists, you know, that they're like, well, you know, they're always, at least not always, but for a good majority of them, I have seen the ones I've come in contact with, I have seen that they've got that money piece going on where they've had very well-meaning people saying, hey, you're never going to make the money that you need to make being an artist. And it's this, you know, this really false belief system that they choose to carry, you know. And, mm-hmm. and even healers are like, you know, I've had a lot of healers say, well, you know, it's a gift from God and I shouldn't charge. And, you know, and I have that business side of me that just cringes when I hear that. So, yeah. You know. And I've been on both sides of the coin. I And I have because mm-hmm. I, I grew up. Um, where I didn't know anyone who was an artist that made money in a way that they were fully independent. I I had never met someone like that. And so then when I went on to do that for myself and have that kind of life, I I didn't believe it was possible because I had never seen it. And so when I realized that I was trapped in this kind of belief of, oh, I can't do it, I thought, you know what, though? I have imagination. You have an amazing imagination, Laura, and we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Laura Hollick. You can visit her website at lauraholick.com. We'll be right back. In 2012, after returning home from Iraq and Afghanistan, Sean Gobin hiked over 2,000 miles of the Appalachian Trail. Recognizing the therapeutic effects of long-distance hiking, Sean founded Warrior Expeditions, a veteran nonprofit therapy program that supports veterans transitioning from their military service by hiking America's National Scenic Trails. Equipment and supplies are provided as well as assistance with job placement. For more info or to help support these veterans, visit warriorexpeditions.org. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com Are you an author looking for publicity for your book? If you're self-published or have worked through a traditional publisher, Marianne Pastana can help you get the media attention you require. 
Contact Marianne Pistana, literary publicist and host of Moments with Marianne, to create a winning plan of action. Marianne has helped authors become bestsellers and has received highly acclaimed media attention for her clients. Some of her work has received attention from ABC, NBC, CNN, CBS, Fox, and PBS, in addition to print and radio. She's a specialist in utilizing social media and her list of exclusive contacts to further the reach of your work. Contact MariannePastana.com to discuss the future of your work today. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We are here right now with Laura Hollick. She's this amazing artist that's taking art to a completely new level. So, Laura, before we pause for break, we were talking about, you know, how artists typically have this belief system, you know, the starving artists, how they're not going to make any money. So how does imagination work in helping artists create money in their lives? And my imagination can create the world where artists do make money. (laughs) And all of a sudden I lit up, I was like, that's true to my spirit. (laughs) So I was able to, you know, enter that because I could feel the truth of that. We can create our own reality. And yeah, we have to, you know, bring consciousness to it. And there's some work to that. But we can do that. And all we have to do within ourselves is just notice what feels good and what doesn't. And those are clues. That's all we really need. It's like, is this true to your spirit? And if it is, it'll be fueled and backed by the universe. And if it's not true to your spirit, it's going to be like drudgery. It's going to create depression. It's going to pull you down. It's going to feel like you can't do anything and you're heavy and you're, you're probably hiding out and faking something because it's like it's not fueled by the depth of your spirit. And the whole universe doesn't know how to back a lie. Like it doesn't know how to like infuse that and make it sustainable. So it's just like really getting familiar with what feels good and what doesn't. And then, of course, being able to trust that that was another mm-hmm. layer and I, I do find that in a lot of people as well that a layer for myself and others is that I would have the good feeling but then I was like oh but I can't trust that because no one else is showing that that's provable or that's good and, and so there was a <laughs> layer of healing around the the permission to trust what feels good and I actually think that there's a bigger story to that because when we look at women and the earth and you know women being in their power and our earth being respected there's a lot around like feminine energy and really it's only recently that women are giving themselves full permission to have pleasure have pleasure in their bodies and have that not be shamed and Mm so a lot of times for women like they're they're just getting over this idea that they're allowed to have pleasure and because if we believe we're not allowed to have pleasure we will not have a creative life because it's pleasure that will give us the impulse to move in that direction and we'll get really stifled and blocked. And so I find often it does weave into female sexuality and sensuality and the ability to trust how your natural energy moves. Like what is your own impulse and attraction and desire? And do we give ourselves permission to feel that and flow with it? Well, and that's so important because, I mean, even, I mean, gosh, me as a child, I can remember having a very well-meaning stepfather come up and go, hey, you know, there are lots of other artists that are going to be way better than you. You'll never make a living at doing that, you know. And so they end up, like, really stifling a, um, you know, a – what could have been a very creative career. I mean, I, and I went and, and I'm creative in other ways, but it's interesting how, you know, this thought process and um, belief systems, even with money. And then of course that, you know, that's just double, like double padding the whole, you know, artists don't make money. You know, let's, let's, mm-hmm. let's pound that one in, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but, you know, but I, I know there's also other ways that you can be creative, no matter if you're an artist or maybe you're just somebody who just wants to be creative in life in other ways. And you teach that too, right? 
Mm-hmm. Well, depending on which of my courses people do with the Soul Art Certification, it is focused on the creative process, and we use visual arts and kind of ritualistic mm-hmm. shamanic processes. But then when I, I teach people who are more wanting to express themselves in the world, that's the, the new icon program, and actually connecting it with money, it really doesn't, I'm not attached to what the medium is. I mean, there's been people who they are designers and they are inventors and they are scientists even and, and authors, writers. And, you know, so it, the, the method of expression is really as unique as the person. And I'm 100%, like I just, it lights me up to see someone in their element and see someone doing their thing. And really, for all of us, like, we all have that ability. We have something unique and creative that wants to flow through us. And, you know, it is, it's interesting, you know, even when you were describing with your, your stepdad and, and how he made that comment, I could feel it didn't feel good. And, like, that in itself, there's the clue. It's like, and that, that would be his belief. But even it probably isn't, it's a lie probably for him, too, and he just adopted it from whatever situation he was in. And often as children, we don't know that the adults have their own stories and issues. And so we just kind of like soak it up like a sponge, like, oh, that's the truth. And we don't necessarily question it at that time. And that's why people in their adult years, and you're asking like, what's the, you know, the main block, it's belief systems that have been embedded from childhood. Because those are at the points when we didn't know that we could make our own mind up about something and we just took it all in as truth even if it wasn't true. And so then as adults, it's like kind of embedded in our system. And we just, we actually think it's true because we're so ingrained with the idea. And so the healing process is kind of uprooting those old beliefs that don't even belong to us and, and clearing them out of the passageway so that the true energy can move through. Yeah, and it, it it breaks my heart when I think about that. And everyone's on their journey to have a certain childhood that will bring up certain wounds that will require certain kinds of healing. So it's all perfect in that way. But it is sad when when you see or hear about someone where they didn't let themselves go in the direction that they were called because a belief told them that they couldn't or it wasn't possible. And meanwhile, their spirit's not going to guide them to something unless it is possible like if we have an idea and a vision and a dream there there is a possibility of it because you've just dreamed it so the reality is already there in the dream world and the creative journey is bringing it from the dream world into this world so it does exist it's just a matter of the journey it takes to to birth it so in working with the people that you've worked with have you ever come across a situation where it's like uh, the person's belief system is so strong, you know, that mm-hmm. the, there's just no getting around that? Or is their desire to be creative in whatever capacity that they choose to be creative in um, is really what kind of pushes through those boundaries? It always comes down to their own desire. Sometimes we're really attached to our stories and because they, they benefit, they, there's some benefit to it. Like if we believe that, an artist can't make money, then we could stay kind of in a victim state. We could stay in a place where someone else has to take care of us. We don't have to face the possibility of failure or people looking at us and judging us. So there's sometimes a benefit to staying stuck. And really, um, people who have that, they'll stay stuck as long as it's a benefit. So I have Mm -hmm. seen that for people. But typically, by the time they come to me or they're even, I'm in their sphere in some way, they have the desire for the movement and they have the desire for the healing. And so it's a very rare case when someone has really, you know, put their heart and soul into the creative process, like doing a soul art journey. Mm-hmm. I, I actually cannot think of any situation where someone has not had a healing when they've actually committed themselves to doing the process. But there's some people who kind of just dabble around the edge because the benefit of staying in the story is stronger than the desire for the healing and the transformation. But anyone who enters the process and goes from beginning to completion has always, I've always seen a healing and a shift. No, I, I don't but doubt that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause your art is so compelling and it, it's, it's art, it's creativity 
it's innovation. I think it's like all three wrapped in one because it's allowing people to express themselves in, in, in a place where they can probably feel safe, where they probably mm-hmm. haven't allowed themselves to ever do that before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the things that I feel I don't try to do this, but I, I, people have said it to me and I feel it just like a natural energy that exudes from me is that I do create a sacred space where the creative spirit is honored and celebrated. And so there's the permission is already there. And a lot of times I feel that, you know, people are attracted to me at different times in their life because they want to be in that, that beautiful nest where they're, they can hear their truth and it's safe to hear and it can be held and honored in that way so that it can grow and they can build the roots so that they're sustainable and empowered on their own, but being in that sacred space where it's a little tender so that it actually can reach the empowered state. So I feel like I don't consciously do something specific to make that happen, but that's something that people have said to me a lot that they do feel safe being in the creative space with me and they feel like they can go deep and and they can uncover things that they never knew that they could before well i you know i'm i'm not surprised because you're so immersed in your creativity that that's you can see that that is like the driving the driving force is that you know, mm-hmm. hey, what's what's available next? And so in that space, there's no judgment, you know. It's just, mm-hmm. hey, let's create, let's have fun, you know, let's moving through those things. Is that how you see it? I, I do see it like that. I would also add to that that for me, art is functional and purposeful. So what I mean by that is that, yes, it is fun. But it's not fun just for the sake of kind of like playing in the sandbox. <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. children, like they play and then they leave and then that was it. For me, yeah. creating <laughs> art is like it's fun, but there's purpose and function. And the function for me is to have the healing, to get the next download of ideas, to have clarity on something, to resolve an issue, to understand something in my life or something with someone else that I'm working with so that there can be movement. And I really think of it kind of like traditional art in a way. Like art, if we look back into tribal cultures, art for them was initially, and this going back in the records of kind of like, how did people first use art? Like, what was art, you know, thousands of years ago? And they used it in things like how to call in the rain. So there would be like the artists, the creators, they would have these masks and costumes and, and do these dances to call in the rain for their crops or to um, heal the sick. And so the art was purposeful. It had like they were expression because they they were wanting to commune with spirit in some way. And so I really approach my work like that where it is fun and yet I do feel like there's a sacred mission that is also being transmitted through that process and and I feel a certain kind of responsibility that I'm to then share that because it's like it wants to it wants to be seen by others because there's a healing encoded within the creation or there's some kind of a message encoded with the in that creation or even a question that people when they look at it they'll be like oh and they'll think about something in a new way and it feels like that's the functional quality of the art it's like it's opening their heart or their consciousness and then in other people's creative process i'm guiding them so that they have connection with their spirit because from that place they they can get their own answers. They can access their healing. So it's always functional in that way. Like it really is to serve a purpose. Hmm. Now let's say you know I I you know I sign up and I want to go ahead and do the the um, the new icon program that you have, but I'm not feeling like I have intuition at all. In fact, you know you know, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know if I have intuition. Is that something that can be developed? Is it something mm-hmm. that can, is it just a, a perception um, that that I'm not able to have that kind of intuition? Um, is that something that you can see people get getting beyond? 
absolutely. Everybody is intuitive just like everyone's creative because intuition is the ability to sense something. And the senses are really from like a spiritual perspective, meaning like we can see or hear or, or just feel something that our spirit is able, has the capacity to understand, but maybe our human self doesn't fully get it yet, but it'll send us little clues. So what would be a good example of that? So intuition, I feel like when people allow their, their trust in themselves, to flourish, intuition is natural because they have no doubt in their feelings. But when someone doubts their feelings, their intuition is, it still exists, but they're ignoring it. They're, they're shoving it aside. They're trying to like um, look externally for someone else to tell them who to be and what to think and like what's okay and what's not okay because they, the trust isn't there to listen. And so a lot of times people will think they're not intuitive, but really they just haven't given themselves the permission to to listen and to honor what they hear. Because intuition, it doesn't even give us like, okay, you know, on this date you're going to do this, and this year you're going to win this Grammy Award, and this is going to – intuition is not like that. (laughs) Intuition is that you're you're driving, let's say, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I, I feel I need to go down that street. And it's not even logical. It's just an impulse. And then you end up going down that one street and then you realize that there was like construction on the street you were heading. And then you just through your pleasure, your ease, your naturalness, you were guided in another direction. And so a lot of times people, they'll feel that like, oh, I'm going to go down that street. But they're like, oh, no, no, I need to get there on time. I can't, I got to, oh, well, what's down that street? I don't even know where I'm going. And they've already, all the doubts have already come through blocking just that gentleness of the intuition. So it's a very subtle impulse that does feel good. Again, it's like the good feeling energy. And, and yet if we doubt it or we kind of, oh, that's silly, then the intuition is, you can just picture it almost like a sad child that then goes and sits in their room by themselves. It's like, oh, okay, I was trying to help. (laughs) <laughs> but we're not listening and so it just goes and sits by itself and then it's like the next time there's an opportunity to share it's like it doesn't want to come out of its room because it's like oh you're just going to tell me I'm stupid so the to grow our intuition is to grow our trust in ourselves and to listen to the clues and act on them and as we're acting on them and I I do this repeatedly I don't really know why I have to do a certain thing like I'll so, suddenly I'll be like oh I need to get on Facebook right now and I'll, it'll feel like almost like a, you know, like I, an urgency in some cases. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I get on Facebook and I'm kind of perusing around and then I end up on one person's page, another person's page. And all of a sudden I'm in this, this thing about this article, which is the exact thing I was asking questions about, you know, and I get the answer. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my, had I felt like, oh no, I, I can't go on Facebook right now. I need to do this thing because that's like the right thing to do. Then I would have never reached the thing that was trying to come to me through my intuition and through just the natural guidance. Another layer of intuition is that a lot of times people think that if they trust themselves, they're going to be lazy and it's going to turn out badly for them. Meaning it's like, oh, what if I just feel like I don't want to do anything? Well, that in itself is also a lie because the truth of our health and our vitality is we want to do things. We want, like, things that are joyful to do, we want to do those. And so there, sometimes there's a layer of kind of, like, going through our own defense mechanisms that are numb us out, which we think mm-hmm. we like, but we don't really because they're just kind of keeping us, like, in a holding pattern of semi-relaxation but more numbness. Yeah. So it really, it's just being able to trust, learning how to trust ourselves, and, and it's a risk. It's a risk to do that, but it's the most rewarding risk that you'll ever take. And and then as it gets stronger and stronger, it's not even a thought anymore. It's not even like, I don't, very rarely, I can't even think of the last time I felt any type of a doubt of an idea that came to me. If it comes to me and I feel it's like, this is what wants to happen, I I'm there. And I wasn't always like that, but the more that we act that way and just like follow the clues and let ourselves go on our path and trust that and know that the universe has our back, then it just gets easier. And then we get more, more things that like the clues get stronger and bigger and, and then it's just co-creation with the divine. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's where everyone really wants to be because that's where all the 
the juicy stuff flows. You know? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, so why don't you explain to our listeners why creativity is so important for our future? I feel like the future is a creation. And so if we want to have a future that reflects something other than what we have today, then we will have to be creative to make that new future happen. And so, and I think that we're all at the point where we can see a lot of things that are just changing, like with all the technology, all the things going on with the earth, we don't quite know how to deal with it. Like we don't really know what to do about global warming. We have an idea. It's like, oh, well, the cars and all the emissions from the cars is causing the problem, but it's not like everyone's going to just stop driving. And so we don't necessarily know what to do and the garbage. I mean, there's just so many issues. We could make a big list of them. So I think that probably across the board, we would all agree that we want our future to be different. We want it to be better. We want the earth to be healthy. We want to feel like people can connect in peace and love and feel prosperous. And so in order for us to to go there into that kind of a future, it's a creative process. It's a process where we are rooted in what feels good because all the problems I feel that we have created now, they have stemmed from decisions and belief systems that are not in alignment with our spirit. And so when they're not in alignment, they're going to create pollution. They're going to create problems and war and conflict because essentially they're at conflict within ourselves. And so as we connect with our naturalness, we connect with our creativity, we'll have the ability to see a new vision of what's possible. And as we can see a new possibility, we can start to create it. So I feel like creativity is an essential skill for, and everybody has it. It isn't even something that, you know, it's not like you have to go out and and get it. You can cultivate it, but we naturally all have it but it's an essential quality for us to move into a new future and for us to be the ones that are co-creating that future and feeling like it's something we desire and and we're stepping into a reality that feels really good and it's, it's in harmony with the world. And with diversity, it doesn't mean that everyone thinks the same. Creativity is everyone's different. And yet, just like in our earth, there's an ecosystem. So there is so much diversity, but the diversity is needed for the health of the ecosystem. So that's another layer of it, just as we allow ourselves to be who we really are. The nutrient of that uniqueness is essential for the diversity of the world. So I truly believe that creativity is is something that I would love to see more encouraged in the schools in children because they already have it. They're already like creative geniuses. It just needs to be cultivated. And then as we trust ourselves, we can create things that we've never seen before. We can, we could, uh, who knows, there could be something where you um, driving cleans the air. (laughs) You know, there could be a whole new system for that. It cleans the air. And then as more people are traveling around the world, it's like everything's getting more and more clean and pure and, You know, so we just need to, the creativity is what's going to allow that to be possible. Creativity and opening that and trusting that and letting ourselves go to that. Mm -hmm. And really, and and you're 100% right, because that really does open up for these wonderful things then to come into being. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like you get those inspirations and that spark that just drives, you know, and that just drives people mm-hmm. regardless of what the situation is, if it's business or if it's art Absolutely. or if whatever. You know? So, hey, yes. let's say, huh? I was just going to say, yeah, it's like, and then the intuition is part of that because intuition is like it gives us the, the guidance into the unknown, into the creative process because the creative process means you don't know the outcome. And that's why a lot of people are so scared of it because they want to know what's going to, what's going to happen. And the truth is, is that we don't know. (laughs) We don't know what's going to happen. And so how can we step into something new when we don't know the outcome? Well, it's creativity, it's intuition, it's the ability to trust the impulse that happens along the way, know what feels good, be able to have that kind of integrity within our own spirit that we know the difference between something that is um, really truly feels good 
versus something that's kind of like a momentary escapism of feeling good, but it, and you get a hangover the next day kind of thing, you know, like really knowing what feels good and having that kind of integrity to hear that. So we can take the steps that create a new world. Yeah, I can get really passionate about this. I feel that <laughs> creativity, and that's why I'm, I'm not attached at all to what the medium is. It really doesn't matter. I mean, a lot of people think art and painting or sculpture. I'm like, art is a way of being. Art is a way of approaching life where you're creating your reality. You're choosing to love and trust yourself that you can trust the impulse that you have and move in that direction. And that's what creates world. That's what creates art. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. so important. That, that piece is so important because it, it really does um, come up in just about everything, you know, that mm -hmm. creative, that creative process. And then um, not just developing your intuition, but learning to trust it too, when it comes up, Yes, you know, like how you did yeah. with, your, your walks in the forest and then all of a sudden you've mm -hmm. got this amazing beautiful portal and it might not be exactly what you thought it was going to be but I think it probably came out better than you probably imagined you know <laughs> yeah I know and that's the delight of it I'm like wow I, I didn't think it would be like this but I like this better and I learned something from this and so um, and that's again the trust it's like not being attached to it going a certain way, but trusting that there's a bigger picture to why it wants to come through the way that it does. Mm, that's beautiful. Well, and so let's say I'm a new person, you know, I, I'm like, I've had it, I'm, I haven't been creative, you know, I got squashed down as a kid, I've, I've known a lot of people that have gone through that experience, or very well-meaning teachers or college teachers, they said, mm -hmm. oh, it's not quite good enough or what have you. And just from an artistic standpoint, or maybe I'm a business person, it's like I need a whole new change. And I know mm -hmm. I've got this creative genius living inside of me. I just don't even know where to go, what to do first. So mm -hmm. if someone comes to your website, what would be the first thing that you would recommend that they do? I would recommend that they take the quiz that I have on the site, which is what kind of creative spirit are you? Mm -hmm. And what that quiz will do is help to bring clarity around the way that your own creative energy moves and wants to move. Because once you know, like, where you're at, like, where, how does your creative energy want to move through your body and your being and your experience, then you'll be able to support it with its naturalness. So I would recommend doing that quiz. It's a free quiz that's on my site to find out what kind of creative spirit you are. And then from there... There's, I mean, there's different things that you can do, whether you're drawn to the creativity cleanse or the soul art work or the new icon work. But really, it all starts by being able to hear what's true for you. So I would recommend that to start. And then also, of course, to go and check out the, the galleries because whatever you're drawn to is also a clue. Like if you get pulled into one of the pieces within the gallery, there's probably a message within that art that wants to give you a message. Like there, there's something there, there's a communication mm -hmm. there. And so opening yourself to, to receive that and, and let yourself trust. It's like, it's not going to make sense to somebody else. And that's the beauty of art. It's like, it doesn't have to be logical. It doesn't have to be provable, but it just, it needs to resonate with you. And the message that comes to you, like, let that be the message. Doesn't mean that someone else will have the same message, but it's the message that you need at the time that you're at for the changes that you're calling in for your life and the transformations that you're desiring. So I would say start with the quiz and then see what that pulls you to if you do want to take some kind of a journey or a course but then check out the gallery and just see what the art speaks to you mm -hmm. well and you know I was you know in reviewing your website and going over the different um, ways that you have to help people develop that intuition that creative process I mean, it really was drawn to the new icon program and how you have um, you've got you know you've got different ways that you're connecting with people you know they've got journals they've got you know audio trainings and rituals that they can listen to and then I really was impressed because you've got this mastermind forum that you do as well that mm -hmm. really it looks like that would really resonate with a lot of people they were like hey I need that kind of close contact or that mm -hmm. you know that community to really be able to pull that kind of creativity out into the world 
Yeah, it's amazing, the group connections. And there's people all over the world. Now with the Internet, we really can be a global family. And so in the the private forums, in those programs, it's just, it's amazing. And the friendships that are formed. And, I mean, people have met, like, they're, people have gotten married because they've met people in these communities. It's, it's, it's so magical. And really, Aww. the reason is, is because it's connecting from the depth of spirit. And, and it is something that's very important to me that people do feel that kind of safety and the sacredness of it. So there is, um, you know, it's always being monitored to make sure that everything is being held in a beautiful way. And, and people just flower. When people feel loved, they flower. It's like mm-hmm. they will flower. Yeah. If someone feels loved and seen for who they really are, then it can come out more. And so in those communities, that's, that's what I like to bring to it. Of course, there's all the trainings, but really a person's ability to learn is in direct proportion to their, their sense of being loved. Like when someone's, they love themselves and they feel loved, mm-hmm. their mind is very open and flexible. But when someone feels kind of shut down and, and worried about being judged and, and criticized, everything becomes quite tight and it's very hard to learn in that experience and so communities i mean it's really just and all the people in the programs we call it the garden of love <laughs> that's what we call it <laughs> and we actually have, it's amazing we actually have um people they're called love ambassadors and uh-huh. their their job and their role is to continuously infuse those groups with love mm. that is so that is awesome that is definitely mm-hmm. awesome so, wow, so there's a lot of different ways that people can go ahead and connect with you and, and you know, start their creative journey and um, really explore what that would look like for them personally. So yeah. that's, that's definitely pretty exciting. So I know that there is, um, let's see, it was a special day that's coming up here pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. We've got International Soul Art Day on May the 11th, and this is it's a, a global event. It's free, and it's for people to connect virtually and create art together for the day. So I will be in my studio with five other artists. We'll be on a live webcam for the day, so you can watch us create, and you can download a free soul art journey so you can be guided through a creative process, and then a share what you've created. Uh, we have hundreds of pieces of soul art that people have created from soul art days this will be our fifth year doing it and it's just it's amazing it just it, my heart just like bursts open my mind expands and then each person who does send in art that they've created on that day they're featured in the gallery and they have a page to write down the messages that their spirit gave them through their creative process and their art and that is the most magical part like i read through those and i'm like oh my gosh they got such profound insight, such healing, such depth. It's, it's truly mind-blowing. It's amazing. <laughs> so May 11th is International Soul Art Day. And to hear information about that, if you want to get info, you can just get on my newsletter list. It's probably the easiest way. And then you'll get an email uh, specifics about the date and how you can get the journey and be part of that whole event. Oh, that's perfect. So, um, so listeners, you definitely want to sign up for the newsletter so that you can be a part of the Soul Art Day and learn how you can be involved in the community and, and connect with Laura. And her website is lauraholic.com. So um, you definitely want to connect with her. And she's on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram as well. And, you know, I would definitely get in there and look and see what part of the journey you're ready for. And it's really easy to find. You go to our website at the top. It says Journeys. You want to click on that and, you know, get started. Definitely get started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and don't yeah, forget the beautiful. free quiz. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's yeah. a great place to start just to kind of orient yourself to what's important to you and what your own creative spirit is really calling for. Oh, You know, thank you know, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. You're just an amazing inspiration. And um, I'm definitely going to be watching what you're up to. So. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Total pleasure to connect with you. Oh, well, thank you. And to all of our listeners out there, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today and taking this time to be with us. And remember, 
Make every moment count. Join us next time for Moments with Marianne when host Marianne Pestana brings another inspirational, gifted leader to help us grow. Tune in every second Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Moments with Marianne when the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network is at 1510 a.m. Boston. Or catch Moments with Marianne every Thursday and Friday at 5 p.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern Time by going to dreamvision7radio.com. To learn how Marianne started her business from the ground up, visit mariannepestana.com. Don't miss this. And remember, make every moment count.